watching the I Worship Stiller show with your host, Yusuf Kalko, on another episode, which is week three, game three, upcoming games against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. As you know, last week we soundly destroyed the Tennessee Titans with a tough, physical, brutal bloodbath of a game in which many of our players were injured or hurt. And, uh, we smashed Vince Young like I predicted. I knew he would throw a bunch of picks. He would give a ball up. Vince Young gave us the game. Chris Johnson was overrated, like I always say. And I'm, I'm a, like I always use this phrase, I'm going to use it again for about the 2,000th time since I've been a Stiller fan. You may be a great player, but you're not truly great until you face the Pittsburgh Steelers. Meaning you can destroy the whole league and be the premier player at your position, but I'm not impressed with the Steelers. Because more than likely, 99 times out of 100, when you come and play Pittsburgh, you won't be as successful. You probably won't be half as successful. Matter of fact, our defense will probably, ex same thing with defensive players, our offense might expose you. So it is what it is. But I'm going to give the Tennessee Titans uh, plenty of props and plenty of um, credit. They, they have a rough defense. Atlanta Falcons played us with a rough defense the uh, first week. I don't know if they're actually a good defense, but they played well. You know what I mean? But I, I, I'm not going to get on the even though I'm very upset at the wide receivers for not helping out Dixon and especially not helping out, helping it out Batch with productivity when Dixon went down with the injury. But the defense for the Tennessee Titans was tough. It is what it is. We beat them. Kerry Collins came in with a little bit of magic at the end, but we shut him down when he counted. So, we move forward to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are undefeated at 2-0, just as we are. And um, I'll tell you now, <laughs> I'm impressed with the Tennessee, excuse me, I'm impressed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at this present time. They really look good. Um, the offense is flourishing under the second year. Uh, 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 quarterback skills of Josh Freeman. They threw him out there early as a rookie last year. Uh, he took Brian Leftwich's position, but he had a rough year. The team had a rough year. He learned. I always believe if you have a first-round rookie just and you don't have a better choice of quarterback, you throw him in there early because by the second year, improving vastly, and by the third year, they may be a star in the league, like an L.A. situation. You just never know. Um, or better yet, they could have been the next Ben Roberts, but who knows. But uh, Tampa Bay, I'm not impressed with their running game. I'm not afraid of their running game. I really don't think we'll do much against us, but we can't take anyone lightly. We've got Casey Hampton back on, looking strong on D, uh, all across the board. When Farrier went down, when he was hurt last week, I think Blitwell was the PR of Fox. Um, the corners. I'm not sold on them yet, but they're playing good ball. They're playing way better than last year. The addition of Brian McFadden has been huge. Tackles, you know, a lot of them are underneath. Tackles where receivers have been, you know, getting easy catches underneath because he leaves such a cushion in that cover, cover two defense. But he makes big tackles, getting turnovers, you know, and takeaways. Ike Taylor is playing pretty well for the most part. You know, things are looking good. Ryan Clark, he's never going to improve. He is what he is. The average, his average free safety will knock your block off. He can, he can play better. Ryan Money needs to play better. Really want to see that boy Craig and Butler come off the bench. Let him you know, get the defense a little bit. I think he can do good. They really haven't let him loose yet. They haven't given him his chance. Like I said, the linebackers look good. The defensive line is good. Um, Ziggy Hood did a great job in the backup role. And uh, Chris Hill played well when Casey Hampton was down. But Casey's going to be back for this game from what I understand. Defense is looking strong. I'm, I want to compare him to 2008 and 2005 and 1995 and 97 defenses as far as uh, – strength of the defense. I'll go as far as to say if we stay healthy, we can do better than the best defense that the Steelers had since the 70s. And we have the potential in the next two or three years to be the greatest defense defense ever 
the depth now where you can just add one corner. A shut down corner, the hard to come by, but squeeze this one out there in college and wait on the next three, first and second round. Enough of our poor planning for the future. Let's talk about now. Let's go to offense. Offensive line was thoroughly beat up in that game. Three players went down, hurt, and were coming. When the smoke clears, we won't have Trey Essence for this game. He's out at right guard. We have to bring in our journeyman backup, Doug Lagursky, who's also a backup center. This guy, I hope, our offensive line doesn't take a hit with that. I hope the running game doesn't plummet because of that. We can only see what's going to happen. I, I would have went with Ramon Foster. I would have put a uniform on and played safe. No other backup center on the team but Doug Ligurski. So, being that we cut Hartley or Pouncey, feeling he was starting on a great job the first round. Draft choice from Florida, great center. He's doing really well. I'm proud of him. He could be a future Hall of Famer if he lives up to his potential. But uh, I won't go as far as now. Even a good offense line is average at best, and I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, one player spells the next. Tony Hill didn't do a bad job when he had to come in due to injury at left tackle. Jonathan Scott's going to have to play better when he's asked to play the right side. I like him on the left side. We'll be fine at offensive line. We're just going to have to keep grinding out and playing hard. Finally, we did ask us to do and make Redmond the starting fullback. It's a good look. He's learning quick, and he doubles that time with uh, – David Johnson, number 85, he's also a great lead blocker. He's become a great lead blocker, let's put it that way. I feel bad that Francis Penn couldn't make the squad, but Redmond's doing a great job. So, Mike Tomlin, that frees up another halfback slot. He should be playing Jonathan Dwyer. Dwyer's a menace. He's a monster. Holding defenses. He's that change of pace you need. He's that battering ram that'll just bowl people over and run for a 70-yard touchdown. At any time, but you know, as usual, Tomlin doesn't start with uh, start Sanders and Antonio Brown at the same time with wide receiver because I'm done with Antoine Randall. He's almost dead to me. He's not fast. He has no moves. He's uh, weak. He doesn't get open. He screws up on special teams. He screws up on trick plays on offense. Reverses. He's too slow. He lose ten yards. He's just he's a cancer to the offense. Valuable personnel time for this, for this lock. I think they need to in, make him inactive for the rest of the season unless two wide receivers go down to injury. Then you bring him in. Because that he's no type of weapon. Arnez Battle's not playing up to his potential either. Charlie Batch is going to be the quarterback for this game. And the key to that, I think, is to let Charlie throw 25 times or less and let us run the ball 35, 40 times. Let Mendenhall get his first game. With 30 carries, he hasn't done it in his whole career. It's time to be a workhorse for Raymond in the hall. Play it safe with Batch. If you protect Batch, you'll be fine. He gets hit three hard times. We're in bad shape because he's injury prone. He's old. He'll go down. We'll bring in Leftwich. Leftwich will screw up the game. He's beat up also. The best thing we can do is run the ball 35, 40 times, pass the ball 20 to 25 times, or maybe even less. I think we should win this game 27 to 17 at my prediction. My prediction is 27-17. It'll be a tight game for three quarters. We'll pull out in the fourth quarter, and the defense will rain down on them and confuse Josh Freeman, and we should win by that score, by 10 points or more. That's my prediction. You've been watching the I Worship Steelers show once again. Please tune in and tell a friend.